Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. In this video, I will show how to add your email account to Mozilla Thunderbird. It's an email client application developed by the Mozilla Foundation. Thunderbird is an excellent alternative to Microsoft Office and Windows Mail. It is a free, open sourced application suitable for most users providing a solution to managing emails, calendars, contact managing, news feeds, and more. Thunderbird supports multiple email accounts, allowing you to manage all your accounts in one place. Before you can add your email account, determine if the account only needs to be accessed by one device, or if this account needs to be accessed by multiple devices. For example, if this PC is the only device to access my email account, then I can use the Post Office protocol. This protocol downloads the emails to the PC, then deletes them from the server at the end of the task. This protocol does have its benefits. You have access to your emails regardless of internet availability, and you can store as many emails on your PC as you so desire. H however, if the PC were to crash, you can lose all those emails without a backup. And you can only access your emails from that device. An alternative would be the Internet Message Access Protocol. IMAP was created to allow remote access to emails stored on the remote server. This allows multiple clients or users to manage the same inbox. Whether you log in from your home PC, smartphone, tablet, or work computer, you will always see the same emails and folder structure because they are stored on the server and all changes that you make to local copies are immediately synced to the servers automatically. IMAP is the better choice if you have a reliable and constant internet connection need access to the emails on multiple devices, and you are worried about backing up the emails. Next, you will need the names of the incoming mail and the outgoing mail servers with the port numbers used for communications with the servers. This information can be obtained by the service provider. For example, Comcast's incoming mail server is imap.comcast.net, or pop3.comcast.net and their outgoing out mail server is going to be smtp.comcast.net. The default ports for pop are 110, which is an unsecured connection, and 995 that uses a secure connection. Uh, if you're using IMAP, you can use 143 for unsecured connections and 993 for secure connections. The Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP, uses port 25 for unsecured connections, while 465 is used for secure connections. Keep in mind that not all service providers use these ports and server names. So you need to check with your service provider to know which ports to use for for making a secure connection and a proper server name. Now, when you're using Thunderbird, it makes it setting up your email a breeze because it recognizes many service providers within its database. Once you have downloaded and installed Mozilla Thunderbird, go ahead and open it, and you're going to see this window pop up. And yeah, and you know, if you look closely, it does look similar to uh, Mozilla Firefox. Uh, which is, you know, it is based on the web browser. Now, you'll see this first window here. Uh, this is the one that you're going to start with. Uh, the first thing they need is your name. Uh, this can be any name that you want to put on here. Uh, this name is visible to uh, receivers. Uh, for outgoing emails, it will place this name on the email so your receivers will know who the email is coming from. Next, you need to enter the email address of the account and the password to the account. Uh, you want to go ahead and just leave this here where it says Remember Password. And then go down here to the bottom and just choose Connect Continue. Now, you'll see here they do have a huge database. Uh, it's very large. They have uh, all kinds of service providers information on there. 
which makes it pretty much simple for you to just type it in and select what you want and then go ahead and continue. Now, if for some reason, though, that you do come across that your service provider isn't on here, then you can always use configure manually. And you'll see this uh, pop up here to where you can manually type in the unnecessary information. Uh, the protocol that you're going to use, uh, you have the options to IMAP or POP3. Uh, the 3 only indicates the version. Uh, so just you can use either POP3 or IMAP. Uh, you'll type in the name for the incoming server, the port that that server is going to use, uh, the SSL, TLSS, uh, the authentication, which you could just leave it like that as. But it does give you options depending on what that particular what their particular server uses. But in most cases, it's just the OAuth2. And then, of course, you have to type in your uh, uh, username. And the same thing is for the outgoing. Now, if you had to make a correction to your email uh, for like a spelling issue or anything, uh, then you could just go over here and just choose retest. Or if you need to update any of this information, you can still go down here and do retest. And then it will tell you confirm that yes, this information is correct. Once you're finished, choose done. Now it's going to pop up the uh, Google page. Uh, we've seen this in the previous videos. Uh, it's pretty smart when it does this. You just simply sign into the account. Now, if for some reason you do have problems, uh, you can also choose forgot password. This will help you be able to sign in and repair your password and unlock your account. Uh, here, you also have your state signed in, so you want to make sure that's checked. And then just choose sign in. Next, you're going to see the uh, access permissions. Uh, it's going to tell you that Mozilla Thunderbird email wants to access your Google account. Uh, this is the information that the application is going to be using and have access to. If you agree with the information, you can click allow or you can click deny if you do not permit it. Once it has finished, uh, you're going to come to the uh, new screen here. Uh, on the left, you're going to see that the new account has been added. Uh, it's going to show your inbox and all your folders that you had for your account. Uh, as you can see, this one here is set up to use IMAP. Now, if you need to, you can uh, create a calendar, your address books, chats, and so forth. So if you need to add another email account, just click email, and you'll go through the same process again. Well, as you can see, um, it's fairly simple, straightforward to set up your accounts in Mozilla Thunderbird. Um, now, once you're finished, uh, you just click your inbox, and there you have all your emails and stuff that's been downloaded. Uh, if you need to, uh, you can just read some messages, run a new message. Um, if you need to search a message, um, and down here, if you need to set up another account, uh, you got calendar, address, book, and that's all there is to it. And it, if you look closely, it does look like uh, Mozilla Firefox. Um, Thunderbird behaves just like as if it's a browser, but it's for your uh, emails. And if you need to, you can always go to account settings. Uh, this allows you to uh, make any changes to the account if you need to, like a password and so forth. Um, up here, you have your Git messages. Uh, uh, if it's been a while since you've checked your emails, then you go up here and click Get Messages. Uh, that will allow it to get new messages and resync to your uh, server. Uh, if you need to write a new email, uh, if you want to create a chat, um, and if you want to um, update your address book. So, as you can see, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So, um, well, I am your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.